today we are going to look at climate and weather. And the topic we must understand is a very big difference between climate and weather. Um, in this case, we must understand that climate is a, a very big section and weather is a smaller section of climate. We always see that the weather tells us or it gives us the climatic regions. So we need to understand that what is weather? Weather in this case is the state of the atmosphere at a particular point, at a specific time, just like it is here. We look at it at a smallest period of time. For example, when we talk about weather, it's going to give us aspects like um, the day is sunny, the day is windy, the day is rainy, all those ones are, sp are specifically explaining the weather state of a particular place at a specific time. We it cannot be throughout rainy the whole year or the whole month. So that's why we say it's a state of the atmosphere at a particular point at a specific time. So in this case, meteorologists to collect the information about weather for the whole for a very big period of time, say 20 to 25 years to 35 years. So that state of weather that is collected on daily basis is the one that is compiled to form up the climatic regions. Therefore, what is climate? Climate is the atmospheric condition of a place measured for a very long period of time. So for the climate to be recognized that this area is experiencing um, a tropical climate, it is experiencing a savanna climate, it's experiencing a Mediterranean climate or equatorial climate, we must focus on very many aspects of weather. All the elements of weather must be collected for a very long period of time such that we can come up with the climatic regions. That's why it is a region that you look at and you say, this area is experiencing savanna, this area is exp experiencing Mediterranean climate, this area is experiencing equatorial, all right. So in that case, we need to know that the world or the globe has got different air pressure systems, which is basically under what you call the global air saturation. In this case, we have basically two pressure systems or pressure systems, and these include the high pressure and the low pressure. First of all, we need to understand what's the difference between these two. You have been hearing about the high pressure, you have been hearing about the low pressure. It's not a mere saying that it's a low pressure or a high pressure. We look at the conditions that are experienced in the place to say this place is experiencing a low pressure or a high pressure. This is the two diagrams are giving a difference. When you look at this diagram here, this diagram here is showing the high pressure. How do we recognize the high pressure? High pressure, A is descending. When you look at it, it is descending, but it is descending as it is rotating in that anti-clockwise direction. So it rotates anti-clockwise, descending. Now, in this case, as it descends, it simply means that we shall have a stable climatic condition in the atmosphere with no or limited rainfall, um, very cold conditions, and that is going to be explaining the what? The high pressure. We also have this diagram on this other side that is depicting a low pressure. And when you look at it, A is rotating clockwise. So when you look at it, you can see clockwise, you can notice here that this clockwise mo uh, movement is only evident in uh, the Southern Hemisphere. And this one is also evident in the Southern Hemisphere. So in the Northern Hemisphere, it is going to be the reverse. The high pressure is going to be clockwise. The low pressure is going to be anti-clockwise. But in this case, these two diagrams are depicting the Southern Hemisphere. So when you see here, we say that A here is ascending. It is rising. As it is rising, it is in, the, uh, in that clockwise direction. So what, what causes this to happen? You must know that during, um, let me say, during the summer periods, the earth's surface is overheated by the sun. So the, the, earth, the, the, the surface of the earth is heated by the sun. So the air on the earth's surface expands and it becomes unstable. That results it into rising up in the upper atmosphere. So the moist 
A, which is lighter, rises up in the, up, in the upper atmosphere, condensing to form clouds that will result into rainfall. That's why we say, when you look at the low pressure, we say it experiences unstable weather conditions. That is a low pressure. So here is a high pressure. So in other words, with a low, at a low pressure, we must know that air must converge at a low pressure. Why? Because as air moves from a high pressure, it comes to a low pressure to fill the vacuum that has been left by the rising warm air. That's why in a low pressure, air converges. In a high pressure, air diverges. It moves from a high pressure to a low pressure. Then here, it is moving from a low pressure somewhere to a high pressure. So to a high pressure, air is diverging. As air diverges, it diverges because there is a descending cold air that is going to push this air away from the high pressure. But within here, air is converging as there is a rising warm air that is supposed that results into air to move from a different direction to come and fill the vacuum that has been left by the rising warm air. So those are the two aspects of the low pressure and the high pressure. So we must note that low pressure has got ascending, um, ascending air. It has got unstable weather conditions. It, always fall, it is always filled with a formation of rainfall and also convergence of uh, air into a low pressure. When you look at the high pressure, there is a descending cold air and this cold air results into high pressure on the surface of the earth. There is divergence, there is a stable weather condition, limited or no rainfall at all. That is a high pressure. So in this case, how do we look at the shape of the isobars? When you look at the isobars in the high pressure, Isobars in the high pressure, they form the oval shape. This oval shape results into an elongated high pressure. So when the two high pressure cells are elongated, it results into a ridge. In the same case, I've talked about the air sinking. So air is sinking or descending. The air saturation is clockwise in the southern hemisphere. The skies are clear and dry conditions. Isobars increase towards the center. Actually, all these conditions that are indicated here are depicting uh, the winter seasons. You'll find that during winter, it is descending air, air is rotating uh, or saturates in the anticlockwise direction in the Southern hemisphere, clear skies, the, dry, the conditions are very dry and so on and so forth. That is a high pressure. We move forward to a low pressure. When we go to a low pressure, the low pressure isopers form that round shape, we call it the circular shape. As it is rotating towards the center, it forms this circular shape. And then this shape in the circular shape, it's depicted here, okay? Then when you look at that, A rises at the center. A rises at center. It's just known, it's not only any air that is rising, it's basically the warm air that is rising. And the reason why it is in position to rise, it's because this air is light, it's moist. Therefore, it is in position to rise as it becomes unstable on the earth's surface. We look at the second one and say air saturates in the clockwise direction. We can also see on this diagram, this is clockwise. If you cannot see it clearly, or if you can't observe, or you can't differentiate between clockwise and anti-clockwise, you can look at a wristwatch. When you look at a wristwatch, you will see that it rotates this other side like a, or a clock rotates this other side. So that is clockwise. So the opposite becomes anti-clockwise, okay? We go back to this and say clouds here, cloud cover and rainfall form. Which kind of cloud cover do you experience in this, in this scenario? The cloud, the cloud cover is going to be that overcast clouds, um, normally referred to as the cumulonimbus clouds that is responsible for the heavy rainfall. Why does it form? These kinds of clouds will form for the fact, because of the fact that there is a rising moist air. That air has got heat embedded, which you call the kinetic heat or the kinetic energy. So as it rises in the upper atmosphere, it condenses to form clouds after losing that latent heat that results into the formation of clouds, hence forming rainfall. In the same case, we shall see that isobars decrease towards the center. How do you look at this? We see that when you look at a low pressure, when you look at a low pressure, 
this the isobars are going to be drawn somewhere here. The isobars are going to be drawn somewhere here. And you'll find that as you move away from the center, it is increasing. As you move towards the center, it is decreasing. Okay. Those are the kind of the isobars we are talking about. And that is mainly depicted on um, synoptic maps or weather maps. In this case, we need to understand, we are talking about pressure. We are talking about isobars. But what is, uh, what is pressure or what is atmospheric pressure? First of all, atmospheric pressure is explained as the force that air exerts onto the Earth's surface. As cold air descends, it exerts too much pressure onto the Earth's surface. And when it exerts that too much pressure onto the Earth's surface, that's why we say it is a high pressure. On the low pressure, when you look at it, the warm air is rising. That means it is leaving the Earth's surface with less pressure. That's why we say it's a low pressure when it is hot. So atmospheric pressure is basically measured with a, bio, a barometer in a, what you call hectopascal or milbars. So if you don't find the word hectopascal, which is abbreviated as HP, as we find it as a milbars, MB, that is. Um, so we move forward to understanding this global air saturation. 